Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this video on stop hunts versus stop alerts. Now, I'm gonna be going over the pros and cons of both. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the pros and cons of stop losses. I mean, the, obviously the pro of a stop um, loss is that your risk is defined and uh, if the market goes against you, uh, and you get stopped out, then that's it. You've only lost your defined risk. The con of that is that you end up being stopped out. So um, many people hate losing. So they hate being stopped out. Um, and there is something called uh, stop hunts and stop hunts are very, very real. Um, the market does actively seek your stop losses um, and they are literally placed in, uh, most retail traders place them in obvious places. But um, if you don't like being stopped out and also um, the fact that when a lot of traders get into trades, um, they get stopped out only for the market to go in their direction. So um, let's say, for example, we have, let's say, uh, I'm looking for an example. Um, da -da 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 uh, okay. Uh, right. So something like this, right? Let's say they saw uh, a level here, right? And they wanted to be a seller to the downside now they might have entered on any one of these candles this is a one minute chart um but they might have placed their stop loss somewhere above here then what happens is is price comes up spikes them out and then price ends up going in their favor um so in that sense uh, the stop loss is not uh, great. And if you had a stop alert, what would happen is, is that you wouldn't be stopped out. It would basically, you would set a pending order, or sorry, an, a pending alert here. So on your broker, it would alert you that price is about to, uh, is, is touching your, your, uh, your price limit. And then you can make a decision as to where or whether you want to exit that trade or not. And if you feel that you're being stop hunted, um, obviously you would maybe hold the trade for uh, a minute or two or five or ten minutes and maybe see where the next candle closes and um, you know make your decision from there so the obviously the cons of uh, stop losses is the fact that you're going to be uh, stopped out a lot more than if you had stop alerts at certain levels now the stop alerts <laughs> is um, one of the obviously uh, the cons of stop alerts is the fact that if the market does continue to go in a direction, it continue to go higher, then, and we the thing is we don't know that the more what the market will do, then um, you'll probably end up losing a lot more uh, than you initially wanted to risk. And um, for some people that's fine if, you know, they've got a high risk reward, and uh, they got a high win rate, um, then they don't necessarily mind losing a bit more than what they risk on you know certain trades, and um, they normally get it back uh, if they're if they're obviously managing their risk reward correctly. Um, but the problem is, is that let's say for example you're of the mentality or you're not necessarily experienced in uh, doing mental stops, and you start convincing yourself that price. Uh, will come back and then all of a sudden price just keeps going higher and higher and higher and then what you do is you get yourself in trouble because you're then um, hoping and wishing that the market comes back to at least your uh, your original stop alert level or at best your um, your trade entry. Now if the market never ever comes back, when do you get out? You know, a lot of people, like I said, they don't necessarily like to take losses or they can't accept the loss um, and once they're in it. And um, it puts you in all types of psychological issues. So while the pro is the fact that you might not be stopped out as much and you kind of avoid certain stop hunts, uh, the con to that is that you, uh, it, it, when you do get caught, 
you could get caught quite badly. Now, um, for those that do remember, um, the well, this is the, uh, the, the you know there are flash crashes, and I think they're happening more and more often um, in the market. This was. Uh, last year the flash crash of the pound baffles traders with algorithms being uh, blamed and there are flash crashes that go on um, again this is a function of the market whether it's caused by algorithms or a fat finger um, it's just what it is now you may get away with um, not uh, being caught out by a flash crash or um, like two years ago there was um, in 2015 or three years ago now it says on here uh, the Swiss Central Bank stuns the market and this is where they kind of decoupled from the uh, from the euro um, <laughs> and uh, one of the biggest market moves um, in a long time uh, kind of like a black swan event um, and all it takes is one of those flash crashes or an unexpected um, central bank uh, policy shift that you know catches the market offside and if you haven't got a stop loss um, and even if you and even if you have you can get caught out by you know for example slippage and stuff like that so matter of fact let's go to um, a Swiss pair right and let's go back to uh, let's go to the dollar Swiss right and let's go back to 2015 travel back in time right now this was the move look at this massive move here right this was the day uh the fifth uh the f january the 15th of 2015 and this is what caught the market offside now i was actually in a trade on this and i luckily had the broker i used uh had guaranteed stop losses so i was guaranteed uh to get stopped out now you might think to yourself well why I've, if I've, if you've got a stop loss then um you should be stopped out anyway and again many of you know who've been trading the markets for a while will definitely understand that you you're not always going to get filled the market is volatile if you've ever tried trading the news during a high volatile news event uh, there's something called uh, slippage and you will get slipped so your order let's say for example you had a stop loss uh, above this or oh, sorry below this level right now your um, your uh, sell stop order is in a queue right with everybody else's sell order because um, if you're buying and you're placing the stop loss it's a sell order now you obviously have to have um, someone to sell to right but um, if nobody's going to buy <laughs> your um, you know if your order is not filled right and uh the auction process and somebody's willing to you know buy your sell order because you're forced to sell by the way when your stop loss loss gets hit you are forced to sell to the counterparty right at a, at a lower price so let's say for example you bought here uh at 1.02 and you'll be uh you'll be buying back you're forced to sell i should say at 1.00 so you're forced to sell to to back to your broker to your bank and they are literally buying back you know the uh the the currency at a cheaper price and you're selling it for a more expensive price but if your order doesn't get filled uh on your broker and you've got a stop loss around you know whatever level you might not get filled until somewhere down here or somewhere down here or you know a worst case and, and it happened basically there were people that literally lost uh, their their livelihood um, there was a broker Alpari that uh, went uh, broke literally um, <laughs> they literally went into liquidation I think the broker FXCM had a lot of uh, um, trouble as well and there were you know private funds and um, individuals who literally lost you know hundreds of thousands and millions and literally put them out of uh, business and uh, not only put them out of business but you know obviously affected their their family and um, and their definitely their future so um, even with a stop loss 
uh, you can get caught out by the markets if the market is volatile. Yes, these are black swan events. They don't necessarily happen, um, you know, a lot, but it doesn't necessarily need to happen a lot. And again, depending on what time frame you trade, um, it could just be uh, an announcement. You know, there could be something with China, you know, North and South Korea. Um, it could be something over the weekend, the political event that literally the market gaps and you are in trouble, you know, a flash crash or whatever. So um, obviously the pros and cons of stop losses and stop alerts. Um, again, this is just my opinion, um, but accept the loss. You know, if you have to move your stop loss a bit more or, you know, decrease your risk, uh, definitely do that. If you're, if you're, if you don't know how to, uh, you know, I wouldn't say don't know how to trade, but um, if you're comfortable with not having a stop loss and using a stop alert, by all means, um, you know, do what you have to do. But when it comes to anybody out there that's even considering a stop alert, as good as it may sound um, in the short term, all it takes is uh, one time for you to lose everything. So um, the pros and cons of stop losses and stop alerts. I uh, hope you found this useful and uh, take care.